Good evening. This is the Colorado Energy and Carbon Management Commission. It is Tuesday, April 9th. This is a agenda, uh, agenda, uh, agenda, agenda. Good job there, Robbins. Um, and we will start with the roll call. Thank you. Commissioner Ackerman? Here. Commissioner Cross? Present. Commissioner McGowan? Commissioner Mesner? Here. Commissioner Ray? Here. Commissioner Oath? Commissioner Robbins? Here. Mr. Cherry, a five of seven commissioners present. Great. Good evening. Um, good evening to those that are joining us. Um, we anticipate this will be a short meeting. We have one item of business, but it is an important one. This involves the cumulative impact rulemaking um, deck docket 2402-00042. The, again, the cumulative impacts rulemaking. Um, Want to inform the world that's listening in that uh, Pursuant to SB 19-181 and SB 23-1294, um, we were informed that we needed to undertake a rulemaking this year um, uh, around cumulative impacts. We've been uh, working hard on that. We opened the docket in February. We had a really good informational docket ahead of that run by Commissioner Ackerman. Um, and then, um, but mo more recently, there have been developments at the legislature, none of which is firm, that potentially could provide us with a yet a new definition and process around cumulative impacts. Right now, we were supposed to do our cumulative impacts rulemaking by April 28th, based upon 1294. Um, we are cognizant of what's happening at the Capitol and our commissioners, our staff, and frankly, all of our stakeholders have all agreed on one thing. And that agreement is that it is not prudent to, you know, work through a cumulative impacts definition during the month of April when that may when there is a chance, maybe even a significant chance of that definition changing, which means we'll need to to to, to start and restart. So with that, uh, and to conserve resources of the commission, ECMC staff and our stakeholders. And to allow the legislative process to play out, I would like to make a motion to continue the cumulative impacts rulemaking docket 24020042. That includes uh, continuing the April 9th and April 19th public comment sessions, as well as the April 22nd through the 26th party presentations. I move this matter be continued until 9 a.m. on May 15th, 2024. This motion also vacates any any pending deadlines set by the hearing officer. Before I go further into the motion, do we have a second on the motion? I'll second. All right. Discussion on the motion, and I'll provide a little context here, and then I would love to hear from my fellow commissioners. Um, what this is doing, folks, is giving parties uh, relief from having to continue to, to litigate, prepare, create witness testimony, File final statements and all of that um, over the next couple of weeks while we, and it also gives us a chance to monitor what may or may not happen at the legislature with regard to the definition ECMC and the rules ECMC is to prom promulgate around the, con the important concepts of cumulative impacts. One of two things would play out. Number one, a new definition is legislated and we see that it's going to become um, effective. Um, the session is over in, uh, I think, around May 8th. So the continuance gives a week after that so we can monitor what may or may not happen. If a new definition occurs, then we will follow the dictates of the legislation, which likely will tell us how and when to restart a rulemaking around that new definition. Second, if a new definition does not occur, then on May 15th, we will work with our stakeholders and our parties to come up with a new hearing schedule that does two things. One, ensures that all parties and staff and commissioners have an opportunity to be fully vested, fully informed, fully ready to deliberate on cumulative impacts. And two, we will try to accommodate that most important goal with a calendar of a hearing schedule that ensures that the parties are able to be ready for a hearing, but also gets it done as, as, as soon as we can get it done while making sure we get that first goal met. I'm sort of thinking that means, you know, uh, work in 
June by the stakeholders to supplement their pre-hearing statements and responses, gives us a chance for public comment. And then I'm sort of thinking, you know, July-ish would be a hearing date on cumulative impacts. Those are not firm. I'm just trying to inform our stakeholders of some ideas of it's not a predicament we wanted to be in, but it is where we are and we're all in it together. And we need to make sure that we solve for the problem in an appropriate manner that uh, ticks off all the boxes that are really important around this really important topic. So those are my thoughts about this. Um, I appreciate um, us um, holding the hearing, having a motion in a second. I would love to um, hear from any further commissioner um, if there are concerns about the plan it's kind of a wait and see plan at this point, and then we'll figure stuff out. But uh, further discussions on the motion. Commissioner Messner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think from my opinion, I think this is a, a, a prudent step. Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty occurring uh, in this legislative session around potential direction, statutory direction around cumulative impacts. Um, I think it, I, I want to make it clear uh, to stakeholders that there, um, that this, that this uh, delay is not, you know, to put off this rulemaking associated with cumulative impacts. I think all of the commissioners are um, engaged and understand the importance of undertaking this cumulative impacts rulemaking, but it seems like the the due process associated with it and some of the uncertainty around the direction um, requires us to be prudent in our timing. And, you know, certainly I think that uh, the sooner that we can get the cumulative impacts rulemaking complete following the legislative session, the better. Um, but want to make sure that folks have enough time to fully engage in this because this is a difficult topic. There's a lot of information that will uh, be shared associated with this uh, topic and want to make sure we take the time to uh, do a good job on this rulemaking um, because I think it's really important. And so um, so I think this is a, a prudent step forward uh, and uh, would support the motion. Further discussion on the motion? Commissioner Cross. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for bringing this forward today. Uh, I agree that I think this is prudent given everything that is happening at the legislature. Uh, I just want to chime in to say I know that some stakeholders are likely frustrated. Um, I know that I, as a commissioner, am frustrated that we've been kind of wrapping this up and getting ready to go, and, and now we're kind of in a holding pattern, so to say, um, especially given that we were given a legislative mandate to finish something by April 28th and now we'll not be doing that. Um, I do think that it is important to understand that ultimately as a regulatory agency, we are bound to create and enforce regulations that are provided in the context of the legislation that we have jurisdiction over. And so to the extent there is any kind of change in the legislation, um, we obviously cannot do any kind of regulation that would be contrary to that. And so I do think that this is prudent given the uncertainty of what's going on at the Capitol currently. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I recognize that some people are frustrated by this and, and they're not alone, but, but it's important that we do what's in our jurisdiction. Thank you, Commissioner Cross. Further deliberations? or discussion, uh, Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just make one addition to those comments. And that's that while I agree that it, it's a difficult matter and somewhat frustrating, it's also a predictable matter that if there are uh, potential changes impacting processes that are underway uh, in our processes and potential changes at the legislature, it, it is likely that we'll have to pivot in those types of situations. And so this is not limited or or specific to cumulative impacts, but rather uh, the environment in which we live. And we do carefully and closely monitor and engage in the legislative processes and and are uh, trying to chart the path that is the most expeditious in the long run. So I appreciate the work that's been done on many, many fronts to, to get to this point. This is certainly not a decision that 
has been come to uh, right now in these five minutes. So thank you specifically, Mr. Chair, for your work, but to many others for their work. Yeah, great. Thank you all. Any further uh, discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Motion carries 4 to 0. Would note that uh, Commissioner McGowan is excused uh, from being absent this evening. Um, we will adjourn upon a motion and then we are reconvening tomorrow morning for our normal business agenda. So, um, motion to adjourn, anyone? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will see you in the morning, 9 a.m. Thanks, folks.